If I traded it all, if I gave so welcome it back. all away for My next way. guest is David Fisher. He is the CEO of Landmark Capital. Welcome back to the show. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about today. We're going to revisit what I talked about on your program a week ago because it was such a milestone, a landmark, if you will, no pun intended, uh, on our country. And uh, it's actually not a good thing, but some people, but it's better than the alternative of defaulting. So, you know, just to revisit that, people were saying, you know, we have to raise the debt ceiling. It's not spending. It's not, you know, we're not going to spend any more money. And technically that is correct, Carol. But the challenge is, if that's true, then why are we 18 plus trillion dollars in debt? So it really is spending. When you boil it down to simplicity, it's spending more money. But it's money that we've already voted on, passed, and said we're going to spend. But the problem is we never reel it back in. Once you start the spending habit, it's, as my dad said growing up with the farm, it's easy to overspend. It's really difficult to cut back. And our government has not learned that. Well, Americans in general, exactly. it's not something that, you know, why should they know, do something different that they haven't been doing for years and years and years? Okay, I want to talk a little bit about you real quickly because you have a lot of, um, you've helped a lot of people out here. You've been coming on the radio here on my show. You've had your own show. Let's talk about you real quickly so that they can hear about what you do for anybody that hasn't heard you. Well, I've been in, been in the industry of precious metals for 22 years, done lots of seminars, significant amount of uh, publications, uh, been on national radio multiple times, local radio. As you said, I've had my own program. It's called The Market Close. I had a daily program, had a monthly program, done a significant amount of education. That's what our company is, is founded on, Landmark Capital. We believe in education. We believe in a strategy. We believe in helping people open their eyes to see what is really happening, not necessarily what every single media is going to tell you because there's a lot out there that the media is just not even talking about. Because if they really talked about it and put all the pieces of the puzzle together, people would be panicked. When you say open your eyes, every time you come on <laughs> since I've met you, my eyes have gotten bigger and bigger. And what you're all about is educating. You're not here to scare anyone no. or anything like that. This is all about educating the public. If you and I operated the way our country operates now financially, we wouldn't be sitting here. We'd be in debtor's prison. There's no way we could function. What happened in 2008 with people, financially, people lost homes, multiple homes in some cases. Many people lost their hard-earned working jobs. They lost, some people lost their 401ks, their IRAs, because they had to liquidate them to live off of. That happened for a reason. It just didn't magically happen. All of a sudden, one day, we woke up and this happened. It was a culmination of events that happen around our financial system. And the same thing is rearing its head once again. It's come, gonna come out in a different way though this time because people aren't over leveraged, but the government is well beyond over leveraged. And this time it could be the, the big one, the big earthquake that would make what we saw in 2008 and then 1929 just small potatoes. Because the problem is, is that we're masking the issue we still have not learned as a country. Evidence why us we're being $18 trillion in debt. And imagine with me for a second. Let's go back to when President Bush was, because it's not a Democrat or Republican problem. It's a leadership country problem that both parties are at fault. Evidence why we've been arguing for the last seven or eight years. I'm sorry to be so passionate, but this just frustrates me to no end because it's a really simple as balancing your checkbook. That's how simple this is. But we don't want to do it. There's no incentive to do it. And they all talk about doing it, but they're, none of them are going to do it. And this bill that was passed by President Obama, he got 90% of the spending that he pushed for back in February. When we gave him a lot of pushback, as Americans said, we don't want any more spending. But yet he got it. In fact, if you look at the reality, he got a blank check signed by John Boehner. And Paul Ryan said, I got a clean slate because I don't have to deal with any of this for the next, till March of 2017. And when President Obama leaves office, the debt will be projected at $20 trillion. I said this eight or seven years ago, after the first year of his spending, 
if he's in two terms, we're going to be over $20 trillion. And I said in seminars here in the Valley, and people said, that's no way possible. I'm telling you, this is the trajectory scale we are on. But it's not a, a Democrat issue either. George Bush doubled the debt from $5.8 trillion to $10.6 trillion when he went in office and exited office. Obama inherits a $10.6 trillion debt, and he's going to exit with $20 trillion. Reagan doubled the debt. I, I love Reagan. He came into office from Carter and with $998 billion, and he left with $1.86 trillion. So the problem is this has never been fixed. I don't care what leader it has been. So imagine here we are looking forward into 2024. That would be two terms of the next president because typically they get two terms. We're going to be at not $25 trillion, not $30 trillion, $40 trillion. That's doubling of the debt. Well, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so what they're going to do if the government can't go anywhere else, they're going to come to the... American people, yeah. right, which is what you've said before. This is why I'm so passionate today because I've never been scared about our country until just recently because there's never been this big sell-off of the dollar until just recently. We Somebody at the end of the day has to hold the, the checking account and has to pay the bill, right? I and mean, we just can't magically create this money out of thin air. You think we can because we have a Federal Reserve. But if they just did that, and they did, it devalues the, our lifestyle. It changes the cost of living. And that's why you saw groceries go up so much these last four or Gosh. five years. Mm -hmm. But yet they say there is no cost of living. So they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. So then we say, well, why doesn't the Treasury just issue Treasury bills? That's all good and fine. And that's where this $1.5 trillion is going to come of extra spending till March of 2017. The Treasury has now got the green light to issue $1.5 trillion. But the key is, who's going to buy those? Because if nobody wants to buy it, then we have to create an incentive to buy it. And they raise interest rates. If they raise interest rates, it perpetuates this debt issue because 30% of our interest payment comes from revenue. In other words, we're, we're paying a lot of money, tax dollars, just to go so, to paying for the interest rate on the debt. And so what's happening? When you keep doubling your debt every uh, eight years under every presidency, pretty soon it's not going to work. And we're at that level because what's, what happened this time has never happened in the history of the world, according to our own Treasury and reports saying, this is the biggest sell-off in the U.S. dollar this year we've had, Carol, according to our Treasury, since they've been collecting data in 1978. So this tells us that the world does not want to hold our dollars. And while that is happening, we're having other countries, China and Russia, buying massive amounts of gold, getting their currency out there, and, and trying to lay the groundwork for an alternative currency to compete against our country. This has never happened before. So we're, we're moving into an era where the world is saying by their own choice, we don't want to hold as much dollars because we don't think you can manage your money, and clearly we can't. So we're going to have a catastrophic event if we don't do this sooner rather than later. And this is what the IMF said in a report in 2013 when the debt was $14 trillion. They're saying we're headed for a financial disaster unless we don't act. And here we are, a year later, we haven't acted. Or two years later, we haven't acted. And this is why we just keep kicking this can down the road. And we hope that, that Ryan will take care of this. But the function of Paul Ryan is not to stop bills, because this has already been passed. The function of Ryan is to gain enough momentum and steam so that he will keep Congress as a Republican side, because they think they're going to stop this spending. But it's not a Republican or a Democratic issue. It's a both issue. They both have overspent. And the blaming has to stop, and we have to roll back our obligations because we're $52 trillion in unfunded liabilities. We'll talk about that. I know we're getting ready for a break. We're going to go to a break. Should we give this out to everybody, the coming bail-in, what you wrote? Yeah. And uh, everyone's going to get that uh, for calling in. Our number here is 602-277-5369. Uh, Toll-free, it's 1-866-536-1100. How to avoid it from affecting you. We're going to talk about that when we get back to his number is 602-287-9200. It's LandmarkGold.com. Hang tight. We'll be back in just a minute.
If I traded it all, Our lines are open here. We want everyone to call in and get this information from David Fisher. He is the CEO of Landmark Capital. Uh, and a lot of people, when you, when you start talking, you know, our mouth starts opening up wide and we just are like, oh, my gosh. Uh, I want everybody to know about the, the white paper real quickly. Want to tell them what it is. There's, there's a thing called a, a bail-in. It's happened in 14 countries. I thought it was 12, but I did some more research. It's actually two more than I found recently that I didn't know about in the report. So there's 14 countries that have already gone into their citizens' bank accounts, retirements, and pensions, seized it because the very thing, things that I'm talking about right now today, only a portion of it was happening in their country, not to the magnitude that's happening in our country, and they went in and seized their bank accounts to pay the debt down, to support their currency, to get ups, un, under upside down, to right side up in their financial structure so that they could function as a country. And it's coming to America. It's all been set up. The report details it through the Dodd-Frank Act, explains all the laws that have been passed, and, and what President Obama has done, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, all the entities of the government, well, how the Fed's involved, and even the FDIC, and it cites all the all the documents there. We want everyone to have it. The number here is 602-277-5369. Toll free, it's 1-866-536-1100. When we went on a break, you said you gotta, you're gotta. you not going to believe what's going on with Social Security. Talk to us. We have so many government agencies. Most of our government agencies are unfu underfunded. In other words, we've put money into it, and we didn't handle it properly. And there's not the money in there that is directed to pay out over the time it's supposed to pay out from people like retirements and Social Security. It's not just Social Security. It's the Social Security um, Trust Fund. It's also the Highway Trust Fund, the Civil Service Retirement Fund, the Disability Fund, the Currency Stabilization Fund. I could go on and on. Government Pension Fund is uh, also unfunded. Uh, and it's when you add all that up, it's to the tune of somewhere around $52 trillion on a conservative number, as much as $104 trillion on an aggressive number when you add the interest and in payments over time. Either way, it's, un it's unpayable. So, um, But on top of that, we have other funds now that are coming to light called pensions. Pensions in, 2000, in the year 2000 was underfunded by $36 billion. Today... There are, excuse me, $60 billion in year 2000. Today, the report just came out yesterday. The um, pension funds are underfunded now to the tune of $366 billion because what happened in 2008 affected pensions. That's why I thought we didn't have them anymore. Well, this is why the government now is wanting to pass a law to either do one of two things, raise taxes on these pensions, require them to pay in more money. So they're already underfunded. They can't afford to pay any more money. And our government, in its brilliancy, says, well, we're going to force you to pay more money. Yet they're underfunded, and that's like a dumb solution to a bad problem. The other thing that they're trying to do, if that doesn't work, is roll that pension over to a government-regulated retirement of a 401K. In other words, the government wants to control the pensions that are underfunded. Like they've done a brilliant idea with Social Security. Here's what's going on with Social Security. We are playing the shell game. In fact, this is what the Treasury has been doing. They've been doing called extraordinary measures. They've been borrowing from these underfunded um, programs, these funds in our government, when there's no money there to borrow, and they're keeping the government propped open. Now we've got to put that back in there, and they just add it to the debt. So the debt is really going to be higher than $20 trillion when this is all said and done. But what has happened recently is the disability uh, is getting a bailout. The Social Security Disability Fund is getting a bailout from our Social Security Fund to the tune of $150 billion. Yet the Social Security Fund is insolvent, and they said it was going to go bankrupt by 2016. And that's just next year. Does that mean that there won't be? It means that they're going to have to have aggressive cutbacks. In fact, President Obama's 2016 budget, he has said this already, we have to... We have to overhaul the retirement system, overhaul 401k IRAs, overhaul how brokers manage. We have massive capital controls getting ready to happen. We have to overhaul pensions. We have to overhaul the Social Security system and have massive cutbacks. It's not going to be accepted. That's the problem. We're, it, we won't get it done, and so we're going to face this brick wall. But what happened today, uh, the article came out, and here's the title of the article, that our country gave bonuses to employees caught sleeping 
and drinking on the job. Social Security. It says the Social Security Administration gave bonuses to employees who were caught sleeping and drinking on the job, job according to a new audit by the agency's inspector general is done by the Office of Personal Management to the tune of $145,000 over awarded to 240 employees that its discipline was conducted for issues. Here's, here's one award that was given out for a monetary award called an ex, extemporary contribution or service award, which was worth $650. It was given to a worker who was suspended for five days after 21 improper purchases with a government credit card. The credit card bill was 45, overdue, 45 days overdue, and the employee owed $1,300 of personal money that they charged on the government's credit card. So we ha don't have a working system. And this is what the problem is. And I don't think we're going to get it. I don't think whoever has in, who's going to get an office has the, the fortitude. And, and people have come together, Republicans and Democrats, to fix this at this point. And this is the, why the world's selling the dollar. So what I believe is going to happen is what the International Monetary Fund has said is going to happen. And what the Fed has said is going to happen. What Ben Bernanke has said is going to happen. And multi-billionaires have said is going to happen. And that is, if we don't get this in order, we're going to be forced as a country to deal with our own issues internally through a bail-in. Or cause massive inflation. In other words, raise interest rates to attract new money to hold dollars. But at the end of the day, somebody has to hold the dollar. And that's either going to be the government seizing our 401ks and IRAs, because there's $18 trillion there and there's $18 trillion in debt, and or the government raising, or the Fed raising interest rates to attract new money so that we can print more treasuries to continue this overspending of our debt. Either way, or a combination of those both, it is not good for the American public, and Landmark Capital has a, has a solution, a method. Thank you. What is it? <laughs> Here's where the hope comes in. Precious metals, if they choose to raise the interest rate, is the number one asset to hold. It went up 500% in five years from 1975 to 1980 when Carter was in office. If people moved over a portion of their portfolio and the Fed injects money in the system, they devalue the dollar, they raise interest rates, that's a great way of, of protecting yourself. If they go the other way, which I think they're going to go this way, and that is called the bail-in. I know it sounds crazy, but our government has done way too many things to set this up. Get the report. It will tell you all the things. It's all documented. They are setting this up for a bail-in. And if they do that, that would fix our country's problem. The government will give a bond to the investor. It's called a guaranteed retirement annuity. So they already got the name for it. They've already done test marketing on this. Obama's already talked about it in a State of the Union address a year ago called the Myra um, Bill that he put in effect a day after he talked. So it's already been in place. It's on the FDIC.gov on their website. And if people roll over a portion of their retirement or 401k or IRA into physical gold and silver and they flip the switch, they do the bail-in, they can't access your money like they do in paper. And that's what they bail in. That's what they seize. And according to the Wall Street Journal report, they said the number would be 56 to 71 percent of people's retirement and bank accounts. So these are just the numbers I'm quoting. I don't know what the reality will be, but it's going to be something because we're going to be forced to do it. And this is what the IMF is saying. Please tell everybody, because I know you've said it before on the show, and I think it's important for everyone to hear this again, of how your company has a plan and that it's relatively inexpensive for them to do. Go ahead. Most companies, about 90%, I would say, and I'm speculating on that number, have not figured out this method. And we had a lawyer that figured it out, and I've been using him for five years, where you can roll over your retirement, 401K or IRA, and take physical possession in your hands, not in a third-party depository, but hold it in your hands and not have a tax liability so that if this event happens, you're protected. Plus, if it did happen, gold and silver would go up quite a bit. It would be a great investment anyway. The cost to do this, my competitors charge $995 to $1,995. The attorney here in Arizona charges $350. So it's significantly more cost effective. He gets it done in two days, possibly three at the worst. And so you're protected. And so there's, it takes that fear off the table. Because if we would have done this prior to 2008, 
you would have been protected financially by putting a quarter or 25% of your money in precious metals. And it would have been a great investment, a great way to diversify. It would have protected all the money that you lost in your, in your losing in your house and all the money you lost in your stock portfolio because it went up enough to cover those two things just by putting a 25% into it. I'm not saying get out of stocks 100%. I'm just saying listen to what the facts are because most people feel in their gut it didn't get fixed and something big is going to happen this time. Well, you do free consultations. Absolutely. And we want everybody to call in. I'm going to let you call throughout the rest of the show, too, for his white paper on the coming bail-in and how to protect yourself from it happening to you. Our number here is 602-277-5369. Check him out on his website. It's landmarkgold.com or call him at 602-287-9200.